Hey, Jim, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of getting some nukes this year instead of packages. Or maybe none at all, but I'm looking at nukes. What, I, do you got much experience with buying nukes? I had to have experience. When you say much experience, let me get back to you on that. I, I have bought nukes multiple times in the past. It's, it's, it's the same as buying packages, but different from buying packages. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I need to know a little bit more before I spend a lot of money on this. So, hi, I'm Kim Flottam. And I'm Jim Tube. And today, we're going to talk about buying nukes. The good, the bad, and the ugly. You are listening to Honey Bee Obscura, brought to you by Growing Planet Media, the folks behind Beekeeping Today podcast. Each week on Honey Bee Obscura, hosts Kim Flottam and Jim Tube explore the complexities, the beauty, the fun, and the challenges of managing honeybees in today's world. Get ready for an engaging discussion to delight and inform all beekeepers. If you're a long timer or just starting out, sit back and enjoy the next several minutes as Kim and Jim explore all things honeybees. Well, here's a question. And and I looked into this a little bit. How much does a new cost? And and what I found out is that people sell three frame, four frame, and five frame nukes, and of course there's going to be a price difference. Yes. So if if I if I'm looking to get this nuke established and do something this year, I probably want a five frame nuke. Does that make sense? It does make sense. It's going to cost you the most, but you're actually buying a small bee colony. Most of it. So I got this box with five frames in it. And I go to the place where I'm going to pick it up. Now, there's several places you can buy nukes around here. You can buy them from a dealer, you know, a bee supply dealer who gets them somewhere. Or you can buy them from a local beekeeper who makes splits every spring and, and has a bunch of them sitting in his backyard. Or you can drive someplace down south and get them from the people down there that are selling them and bring them back. I'm guessing that the first choice would be to go to somebody you know. That would that would certainly be my first choice. Someone who's kind of doing you a favor, but doesn't want to do that favor for free. Oftentimes, I don't think they're making a lot of money. If you count their work and their energy and the setback that it causes their own bees, it's, it's a significant cost for them to sell me that five-frame nuke out of their producing colony. They're not going to make a honey crop Nearly as much of a honey crop on that. So it is a cost for the producer, too. My thought was, well, I had two thoughts. One of them, I thought I'd bring you along and have you look with me so I could tell what I was looking at. (laughs) No, I know what's happening there, Kim. You just want somebody to blame it on when this thing goes south. (laughs) Well, Jim told me to buy it, and here it is. I got 38 bees and a bad queen. (laughs) No, I I can ride along sometime, but but basically you started off on the right foot. Do you, I like to buy splits or nukes from someone that you know and someone who's not going to leave town. Now I don't mind driving all the way to Georgia or to the South. You said, but I need to be hauling back a truckload of nukes to justify that. So if I'm just buying two or three, that really needs to be somewhere nearby me. Yeah. But I'll, I'll take a half step back, and if you can, have somebody go with you that knows more than you do or has experience with buying or maybe making nukes so that you've got some extra insight into what the condition of this box is right now. That's not saying what is going to happen in two weeks or two months, but at least today. That makes right. sense. It, it makes perfect sense. There's all kind of good things about having somebody else there with you. I mean, it's the heat of the moment. There's bees flying all over. Uh, You're talking to someone you don't know. It's going to affect your wallet. It's just a good time to have a second set of eyes saying, now, hold on here. What's what's the deal with whatever that, that they bring up? So, no, 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 I agree. If you're new to beekeeping or newish to beekeeping, take someone along who's a little bit further along than you are. Yeah, yeah. Okay, drive over to this guy's house. A Saturday morning, and you already talked to him, and he's expecting you, and you and your friend, 
head out to the bee yard, wherever these nukes are being stored, and you take a look, and here's the question. And there's really two questions here. What are you looking for that's good, and what are you looking for that's less than good? So what's the less than good stuff I should be looking for? Less than good is that you bought a five-frame nuke, and you feel like that it's lightly populated with adult bees. You don't really know, in my opinion, Kim, you don't really know much about the queen. A queen comes with a nuke, and you have to wonder, where did this guy get these extra queens? Is it late enough in the season that he raised his own queens? You can do that in the South. Or did he buy queens from somewhere already? Or, or this, and the big question is, are these old queens that's in the nuke? So those kind of things you just need to ask, point blank. Where did you get these queens? And are they fully established in this nuke? So the one thing I'm looking for is adult population and some kind of legacy of where the queen came from in there. I sound like an authority. I, I bought nukes maybe <laughs> 10, 15 times in my life. Every time, Kim, was different. There, there never was exactly the same technique. Right down to the box there, in. Do I take my own equipment? Does the guy want a frame exchange? Are they in cardboard boxes? Why would that matter? Because you just about can't keep those cardboard lids on an open pickup going home. Even yeah. duct tape failed me on that. So the one thing I'd be looking for there, too, is what are the bees physically in that I will be transferring them 25, 30, 50 miles back to my bee yard? That's a good point. I hadn't thought about the the box that they're in. And, and you're right about asking the person who produced the nuke, where are the queens from? How old is she? And a way to kind of back that up might be take a quick, if you can, if the guy isn't in a hurry and you've got some time, uh, you know, just kind of roughly estimate the amount of surface of the frames that bees are covering and then brood in eggs and larvae and sealed and the condition of the frame, I guess. But starting with how many bees are in that box, how many should there be? Well, how would you want that measurement estimated? The number of bees covering the, the brood or the number of bees running all over the box? There's just no easy way to do that, Kim. If, if you look inside that box and there's, you estimate about a softball sized cluster of bees, that's really, really minimal. If that guy has got enough bees, I keep saying that guy, it can be either sex. So that person has that box so full of bees that they're just boiling out, then you're good to go. But if, if I pull a frame out to see how many bees are on it, then I have to ask myself how many bees just flew away that were going to be mine until I open that box and pull that frame out. So how many nukes am I buying, Kim? If I'm buying 10, I may open one. If I'm buying 10 and some deals, you show up, and the guy says there's about two pounds of bees in each one of these, two frames of brood, two frames of honey, one empty frame, and tells me what's in it, and they're closed up and taped up and ready to go, I may not open the box at all. So when you get home, now they're yours. And you can't load them back up and take them back to the guy and say, wow, you didn't come close to what you said was in here. All I can do is just never buy nukes from that person yeah. again. So I'm trying to, to tell you that I don't really know the best way to physically say how many bees are in that box without opening it. And I want to hammer that point again. It makes my skin crawl to see those bees flying away that I think I just paid for. <laughs> And I'm going to leave them there. So part of me wants all the bees that are on the stuck to the screen on the front or on the transportation screen on top. Those are all my bees. I bought them. I want them kind of attitude. This is not like packages at all, Kim, that, with the way when you buy part of somebody else's colony. This is a, an individually negotiated deal based on how far you drove how much of that person's beehive you want to buy, how much you're willing to pay, where he got the queens. It sounds complicated, and I think it is. Why, why do this, Kim? 
Why would you even buy a nuke instead of buying a package for those who've not done either one before? I'm beginning to, I'm beginning to ask myself that question. You brought up a good point, though, that I want to I want to just mention here is getting them home. How are you getting them home? If you got a truck, that's one thing. You can put them in the back. But if you don't have a truck and you got to put them in the back seat, you know, so when you go to pick them up, go prepared, you know, a, a, a mesh bag, something that you can enclose that nuke in and seal so that if the cover slips or the front door bounces open and bees are getting out, they're getting out into the bag, not into the windshield of your car. That's an excellent point. I cannot get off the subject, Kim. But when I sit in my truck cab, occasionally in my car with the with bees, either a swarm or packages usually, I begin to have some kind of allergic reaction around my eyes. I get itchy. My eyes get watery. Something about me and what, bee hair? I don't know what it is. So how are you getting them home? I, I usually put mine in the back of the truck up next to the cab, lightly strap them down, take off and go. It depends on everything. Did the guy staple them down? Are they, are they? Is it a wooden lid? Is it a cardboard lid? Is it some kind of concoction? Did I take my own equipment and him just transfer the bees to it? And then that case, then I will nail down my own lid or whatever. But you are precisely right. You're going to probably have bees in your car with you. Be prepared for that and don't do something erratic. If a bee gets down your collar while you're driving. Well, that brings up another point. You know, the last meeting I went to, the speaker was talking about how often to replace combs in your in your in your beehives. How long should they be in there before you start thinking about getting them out of there and getting rid of the wax that's on them because of all the stuff that's going on with what's polluting wax. So if like you, I drive up there, they're all nailed together and strapped and ready to, do I get a chance to look at, is this, am, am I buying old, somebody else's problem when I buy old comb? You're changing the subject to a good subject. Let's take a break here from our sponsor. Hey, has winter's chill and weather forced you inside? Well, did you know that Better Bee offers winter classes you can take from the comfort of your own home? Our classes are taught by Dr. David Peck and Eastern Apicultural Society Master Beekeeper Ann Fry. Our classes range from basic courses on essentials of beekeeping all the way up to specifics on planning for the seasons ahead and for your success. Visit betterbee.com forward slash classes to view all of our upcoming learning opportunities. It's been my experience, Tim, that most of the time you're buying somebody else's old comb. I just need to put that out there. Now, how old is it? The devil is always in the details. Is it 10 years old or is it two years old? And all I could do is ask the person to tell me the truth. How old is this? And, and what's your methods for controlling Varroa up and other pests inside the hive? Even if he gives you the answer you want to hear, you still don't know about environmental toxins. So old comb brings a stigma with it. Probably, depending on how fast they build up, how good the nectar flow is, how quickly they draw out new comb, I'll be phasing those frames out probably fairly quickly. But that's in this perfect world where everything results in new comb being built and a declining need for the old combs that are there. The bees are really going to favor those old combs. They're going to put their brood nests there. They're going to make it really difficult for you just to whimsically take those frames out. You're going to have to work at it to yeah. get them out of there. Well, then, and then, of course, no matter what, if they're really old or, or last years, you're going to you're going to probably start replacing some of them as fast as you can. When you get them, when you take them a five frame nuke and put it into a eight or ten frame box. Um, at least you can get some new new comb in there, and then gradually right. get rid of that older stuff. By the end of the first year, all that all those older combs should be gone. I think if you if, if I you would work, agree, work it right. If you give me to the end of the first year, I would yeah. agree with that. 
But I didn't want the listeners who have not done this before to think you can go home and just take those frames out. That's where the bulk of your brood nest is going to be on those yep. old combs. Yep. And while you're waiting for that brood to emerge, she's going to be putting new eggs in there. So you're going to have to keep working with it to move those frames more and more toward the side and then put those new combs that they're drawing out in the center and encourage them to build yeah. that. In your experience, has there ever been any kind of guarantee that this is going to work from the seller? No. no. Nope. In my life, I have had some interesting experiences with the seller. One seller uh, maintained the privilege of dropping by unannounced for spot, in check, for in spot inspections to be certain that I was maintaining those bees in the proper way. I felt kind of childlike. I bought the bees. They're my bees. And so you want to come by, what, two times just to be sure I didn't abuse them? <laughs> so there is that. Some sellers work the other way. But I have never had, what did you call it, Kim? You said it was a tail light yeah. guarantee. How did you word That's that? A, 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 the guarantee on the queen and uh, in either a package or a nuke lasts as long as I can see your taillights when you're leaving. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so the taillight guarantee. That's that's been most of my experience. You've had a gentle person's agreement. Money has changed hands. A product has changed hands that had specific characteristics promised. And there's really no way to, to back up when you get home. You can call and complain. And I guess if you complain loudly enough, maybe uh, the guy would send you two more frames of bees or something. Or you got to drive back and get them. But all of that, Kim, is just in the details. This is not this is not a specific event that's clearly delineated. Every one of these transactions is individual. I want I want to get in a minute here, or maybe next time. I want to get to okay. I got this box home, and what's next? And and I think we need to look at that really carefully because you can screw things up day one. Absolutely. <laughs> if you buy a five frame nuke and you leave it in that box, then you might as well have bought a two-frame nuke and put it in a five-frame <laughs> box. So you don't gain anything having that nuke max itself out and, and not giving it the space that it should be rapidly growing yeah, to. If, if, if that's your goal, and I'm going to get to this a little bit later, but a lot of beekeepers I know keep a, keep a nuke, a five-frame, maybe even a three- or four-frame nuke in, their, in every bee yard they have. And I kind of gave it a name. A nuke is a bee store in your bee yard because it's got everything any of your colonies are going to need later in the season. It's going to have a queen. It's going to have brood. It's going to have frames that are drawn. Anything and everything you need in a beehive is going to be in that nuke, and you just keep plundering that nuke all season long, of course, replenishing it with, with new comb or bees and brood. But before you get to that point, and and I'm getting out to the bee yard. I'm ready to put this thing in, and and I'm looking at what am I what am I looking for that's good, and what am I looking for that's bad? How much brood? How many bees? Uh, how dark? What, what's your experience with that? That I'm I'm going to answer a question you didn't ask. <laughs> when I get that when I get that five frame nuke to my yard, I'm going to put it in a in a in my case a deep box. In your case an eight-frame box. I'll put it in a 10-frame box. I'll do that immediately because probably I've already missed most of fruit bloom because the producer needed fruit bloom to make bees enough to get his colonies, her colonies strong enough to make the split. So the season is already probably a third of the way over. So I, I want to go ahead and get that five-frame nuke into at least a 10-frame box Kim, I would even consider feeding it. If it's not much of a nectar flow and the season has been great, I wouldn't bat an eye at putting a feeder on that and feeding heavy syrup to that colony if the natural resources aren't there. But I don't want to leave them in that five-frame nuke. Now, you mentioned an excellent point. What if that's just a store for your colony and you bought a nuke because you thought you might need two frames of brood to go someplace else and you want an extra queen. That's a totally different yeah. scenario than buying a nuke for colony number increase. 
So when I get it there and I open it up and it's finally in my yard, I think most of the bees that came in that box are going to stay in the general vicinity now. That's when I finally say, whoa, there's not many bees here, adult bees, or there's, you know, more brood than I expected or whatever. That's when I finally get to truly look at what I've bought compared to what the producer promised. And at that point, all, my only real recourse is to say I will or I will not go back to this person in the future, and I will or I will not recommend this person to other people buying nucleus colonies. So I make the decision then. If it's just a horrific case, and I've never had one, then I would call the person up and say this thing was so poor as to you didn't come close to what you promised and then see if anything can be done. You know, there's the advantage of having an experienced beekeeper looking over your shoulder because then, A, you've got another you've got another set of eyes to evaluate the box that you brought, and you've got a witness. Well, that's true. So, true. so if this is your first time getting a nuke or you're, this is the first bees you've bought and you're buying a nuke instead of a package— Boy, really, really look for somebody who can, like I said, be there looking over your shoulder. Yep. And they'll point out all of the things that we're just talking about, good or bad. And then then if it's good, then, you know, you can move in the direction. And I think that's what we need to pick up next time, Jim, is once I got this home and I've opened up the top of that nuke and we're starting to make it into a colony, you think? I, I, I'm happy with that. I do want to finish on one note. We're over time. But the reason we're doing this, Kim, instead of buying a package or trying to get a swarm, is that, number one, swarms are completely erratic. We have no idea when we'll get them. Number two, packages are generally cheaper, but it takes a package longer to build up. You and I have been talking about nukes because by buying a nuke, that colony doesn't suffer the population slump that a package suffers. So uh, uh, in general, if everything goes well, a nucleus colony builds up much faster than a package colony. That's why we've had this discussion. you got about a three-week jump on a package because you've got a laying queen yep. and you've got sealed brood. And, and, and In theory, a good nuke will have a laying queen, sealed and open brood and eggs. Right. And so you so you got yep. a three-week jump. All right, well, next time... Let's uh, let's start. Let's take a look at this again and, and, and start with opening the top of that box and see what we find. I, I would love to do that. It makes me think spring there is you here. Go. All right. <laughs> All right. Till till then, Kim. Okay. <laughs>